Noke, he whanoke. Te koko ngā kōrero e kohi ana i ngā kōrero, mai ngā kokoru o te tai rāwhiti. Ai e te ui kei te koi koi kōrero tātou, mai ngā kokoru o te tai rāwhiti te karā. Kei te wāntea āreo riwi i naia tonu nei e te iwi. I didn't know till I was older we were raised below the poverty line. I actually didn't even know what the poverty line was um, until I was actually probably like in my mid-twenties that I realised there was such thing as a poverty, poverty line and that according to national standards we lived below it most of our lives. Man, look at those pines, it's from... That wind was so mean. So those ducks, they're just quacking away to all the animals in the neighbourhood to let them know there's someone here watching. I hate ducks. Growing up in a Māori community, and I don't know if it's just for Māori, police were the people that your parents threatened you with when you did something wrong. Like, I'll call the police on you. Oh, don't worry, I'm going to tell the police you don't wear your seatbelt. So from those kind of conversations, you tend to build an unhealthy relationship with police officers from a young age. I prefer diving to hunting, to be honest. Diving, I, I, but obviously in the winter time, I can't get into very much fishing and diving, so the next best thing is hunting. <gasps> we can't kill that because it's so small, but where there's that, there's a mama. I'm just gonna look up there. I was in a mutually toxic relationship. I would probably refer to that as one of the lowest points in my life. We're both very young, we just had our first child, my son. Yeah, eventually our relationship became violent uh, and we ended up um, coming into contact with um, police. A female officer came to see me and she knew me and she knew my partner at the time. She wasn't wearing a bulletproof vest she didn't turn up to my house telling me this is what you need to do. She came with a really gentle approach to listen. Prior to, to a female officer coming to see me, I'd only been visited by male officers. I often felt judged and discriminated against. I felt like another Māori statistic. Until a Māori wahine came into my life. Um, yeah, and it's, everything sort of changed from there. There's two things that I want to be. One is a uh, East Coast rugby referee and the other one is a cop. In, in the last two years, I've been a referee. It's really, really crucially important that the officers serving within our community, such as ours here in Ngāti Pro, are Ngāti Pro people and have an understanding of our people and their unique needs. She sees somebody that's struggling, she's not shy to go, do you need my help? Whereas I might go, oh, they Aria, look like they help need them. help. <laughs> yeah, they look like, but I'm, yeah, I don't want to approach them. Aria, you should go and do that. You should ask them if they're okay, where she's just, she's got the confidence. She's a people's person, and that's what you need. I think in the community is somebody that cares about people, genuinely, number one, is do I want to help people? How can I help people? And having the confidence to do so, that's her through, through and through. She doesn't have that pressure of having to please us or a pressure of having to do well because no matter what, we're proud of her. I'm proud of everything that she does. We're really blessed to have the relationship we have. I couldn't have ever, um, I couldn't have done all the things I've done in my life without uh, support of my sister. Um, it gives me a confidence to know that come what may, I can achieve anything because I have that support. You guys want a job? What is it? Go grab, grab some of those cans and put two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Two at each of the jars. 
we were already really close before our babies were born. But once our babies come, it was just yeah. an ex- another branch of love that I think grew. Being an auntie was the biggest, at that time, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. So, oh, I'm going to get so emotional. <laughs> There's a specific way in which we prefer to be addressed and there's a specific type of languaging that we use that is really close to aggressive but can also be jovial. And there's obviously not one way in which all Māori people behave or all Ngāsipurau people behave. But if you have some kind of understanding of how our people move and shake and act and talk, it gives you a definite advantage in terms of being able to offer them sustainable support. Auntie, he what a rare sight to see you without a child. I know. Ma'am, <laughs> it's a solar eclipse. <laughs> I love my community. That's why I want to do this mahi so desperately. I understand what the sacrifices are and I do understand what the commitments require of me. But I'm prepared to do that because that's what this career is. It's a life of service to your community. I absolutely am aware that eventually I will be forced to arrest one of our Fano, but I think um, who better to take care of them in a time where they're overwhelmed, um, experiencing trauma than their own Fano. And that gives me some comfort to know that I'll be able to support my people and our community when they're experiencing some of the worst situations of their lives. I believe that everything that is destined for me is being divinely orchestrated to happen for me. You know, like I think as soon as I was born, my tupuna are just guiding me to, to get there, to achieve or, you know, to arrive at where I'm supposed to be. But wherever I'm purposeful, that will benefit everything around me because we're all connected. What about love? Can't you see?